three year old boy who uh, presented with history of loose stools for uh, a month stools are uh, loose but not watery uh, when uh, mother was asked about duration she said that she doesn't actually remember but it uh, it's present for about a month uh, six seven times per day along with abdominal distension and flatulence for the same duration on examination the weight for height uh, is minus 2.1 z, z score and height for age is minus 2.5 z score it means there is wasting and stunting but not severe wasting or severe stunting and uh, you can see the picture of the child eye so dr dheeraj um, the child has moderate wasting and moderate stunting yes sir okay okay fine you can see the picture of the eye also okay can you tell uh, what is happening in the eye what is happening in the eye vitamin a deficiency bitter spot vitamin a deficiency okay so the child is having a deficiency of vitamin a indicates that there is a deficiency of fat soluble one of the fat soluble uh, vitamins which goes in very well with somebody has written the uh, malabsorption but first let's not go on to that first of all the basic question that will be asked is dr dheeraj has asked whether this is persistent diarrhea or chronic diarrhea so you will have to think of the basic definitions of how do you define persistent and chronic diarrhea neha bans neha says chronic diarrhea dipanvita chronic 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 why not persistent definition of persistent diarrhea is any diarrhea lasting more than 2 weeks is persistent diarrhea yes there is one person who is in my favor persistent since it is more than 2 weeks infective onset because acute onset is not present that's why persistent is infectious in etiology no acute onset non infectious uh, that's why it is chronic dr dheeraj over to you okay so uh, i think most of you have uh, given the right answer this is chronic diarrhea and not persistent diarrhea uh, first of all if we look at the age of this child persistent diarrhea is a disease of children less than 2 years of age this child is already 3 year old so uh, in this age group you see more of the chronic diarrhea now most important point towards persistent uh, most important uh, point uh, which favors persistent diarrhea in any child would be acute onset huh? persistent diarrhea the diarrhea onset is always acute the mother will always tell you that this was the date of onset and it most of the acute diarrheal episode will subside in 5 to 10 days seven days but this will continue beyond two weeks so that may, makes it a persistent diarrhea it means that it is an acute diarrhea which persists for more than 14 days whereas chronic diarrhea is more of an insidious onset diarrhea the stools are not uh, watery usually and they it usually does not lead to dehydration whereas in persistent diarrhea you will commonly see dehydration regarding the infectious etiology even the persistent diarrhea may be non infectious rather it is uh, infectious to begin with most of the diarrhea they start with the uh, infective diarrhea but they persist so the persistence of diarrhea is not usually because of uh, persistence of infection in persistent diarrhea although it is one of the causes persistent infection but most often it is because of the secondary changes which happen following acute diarrhea uh, somebody said non infectious remember even uh, chronic diarrhea can be infectious in origin especially in uh, developing tropical countries like ours um chronic diarrhea the causes of uh, chronic diarrhea could be something like giardiasis or uh, amebiasis so that uh, actually infectious versus non infectious is not a great difference between these two i would say age acuteness of the uh, diarrhea uh, to begin with type of stools watery versus uh, more of uh, loose but not watery stools and presence of malabsorption symptoms in symptoms and signs of malabsorption in chronic diarrhea and symptoms and signs of dehydration in persistent diarrhea so these are the differences so uh, this child is 3 year old insidious onset stools are not watery there is no dehydration and there are signs of malabsorption so all this suggests chronic diarrhea rather than persistent diarrhea okay dr dheeraj we go on to the next question from your side now in this child uh, um, we need to examine this child uh, because when you get such kind of case in examination you will not have any system involvement so general physical examination is the most important so what essential examination you will perform to diagnose various deficiencies because malabsorption means it will lead to multiple nutrient deficiencies 
Okay, waiting for your answers in the chat box. What are the essential other uh, micronutrient uh, or macronutrient deficiencies you will look for? Oral cavity. You uh, don't uh, yeah, skin. No, no. You tell me what you will look for in the skin. Pallor is one. Oral tilitis. Okay, tilitis is one. Dry skin. Uh, phrenoderma. Pyoderma. Why would pyoderma be a manifestation of nutrient deficiency? Maybe you meant uh, phrenoderma only. Edema. Yes. Any other? You have not talked of other fat rickets features. Yes. Bleeding. Pitiki. White spots. Uh, I didn't understand why. Eye signs. Bleeding as a sign of vitamin K deficiency. Acrodermatitis. Pigmented hair. Uh, rickets you have told. Scurvy you have told. Skin fragility and pitiki you have already told. Uh, and then perianal rash. Uh, chelitis, glo uh, glossitis. I think you have covered almost all uh, essential examination to evaluate for other deficiencies. Pallor is very important, uh, first line. Yeah, Dheera sir. Yeah, wonderful. So, all the, the examination, general physical examination will include deficiencies for all, but just don't forget uh, anthropometry. Although you have already been told about the wasting and stunting, but uh, the only manifestation of malabsorption could be wasting or stunting. So, apart from anthropometry and eye examination, I think you have already told all the signs which you need to look for in any child who presents with suspected malabsorption. So, wonderful. Okay, just one query, Dr. Dhira, just everybody said this is a bitter spot. Why is it looking black? Blackish? Any reason? Yeah, from the participants? Bitter spot is chalky white. Why is it black uh, at the peripheries, many of the areas? Okay. Any any answer? Uh, should I wait or Kajal Mohammad Shahi ji ne bilkul theek bataya. Kajal lagaya. Okay. Dheera sir. As uh, it's a rough uh, patch uh, of uh, dried up cells, so it gets stained by any pigment which is applied. And in our country, uh, children are often applied uh, pigments in form of uh, Kajal. So this is often uh, named as Kajal sign also. So, this is definitely application of Kajal on the eye surface, which has led to blackening of this spot. Okay, next question. So, uh, when we have this kind of case on examination, we have already uh, detailed all the deficiencies which are present. Now, we have to do some investigations. So, what all investigations would you do in this child and uh, also specify the reason for doing that particular investigation? Uh, stool examination is the first uh, answer. Lab reports, that is very non-specific. Stool examination, hemogram, CBC. See, whenever you are uh, suggesting an investigation, think of the diagnosis first and don't uh, give non-specific uh, investigation. Stool lactoferrin, you are suspecting, what are you suspecting? Malabsorption, so how would you Confirm malabsorption. CBC is not going to confirm your malabsorption. Hydrogen breath test. Stool for fat. Okay. Serum calcium for vitamin D deficiency. Stool for fat globules. Iron profile. Stool reducing substances. Come, come, come. Yes, very good. Calprotectin. 24 hour fecal fat. Celiac serology. Uh, Dr. Dheera said that this could be infective also, uh, even though this is chronic diarrhea, but uh, stool pH, stool for ova, which ova, ova cyst, uh, be specific, anti-TTG, anti gliadin antibodies, we have a host of uh, investigation, Giardia, very good, I think this is Giardia and atypical organisms you should be looking for, HIV serology, Yes, in today's uh, scenario, uh, that's good. Dr. Dheeraj, over to you. I think uh, all the important investigations have been uh, listed by our uh, wonderful participants. I'll just classify uh, the uh, test results into uh, various purposes. So, the stool examination is very important to diagnose simple uh, things as Giardia. So remember, when you diagnose Giardia as a cause of the symptom, you need to demonstrate trophozoites, not only cysts, because presence of cysts uh, does not suggest invasive uh, infection by GRDS. It could be just, just some uh, non-pathogenic GRDS. 
similarly for uh, entamoeba histolytica or any other atypical organism like cryptosporidium so stool examination is very important for uh, finding any infective pathology and then stool examination is important for diagnosing malabsorption uh, in form of fecal fat estimation stool for reducing substance for protein malabsorption fecal alpha 1 antitrypsin and for pancreatic uh, enzyme deficiencies fecal elastase so these are the tests which are uh, usually difficult to get but uh, uh, you can do simple uh, stool examination for presence of uh, fecal fat and uh, reducing sugar these are the tests you can routinely do bedside then uh, for uh, micronutrient malabsorption complete blood count to diagnose uh, iron and vitamin b12 deficiency and then calcium alkaline phosphatase to diagnose vitamin d deficiency so these are the tests you must do in all cases of suspected malabsorption coming to the etiology uh, i agree that hiv test should be a routine because persistent infection could be a cause uh, then uh, you need to uh, prioritize your inf- investigation you t- just do not send uh, the whole battery of investigation as celiac is the most common cause of such presentation so i would uh, like to send the celiac serology in form of iga tissue transglutaminase antibodies as the first line investigation and if uh, still it is negative i would uh, like to do a total iga and see whether there is a concomitant iga deficiency that is why it is false negative but if after uh, basic screening for uh, uh, celiac disease it is negative i would like to go for other tests including for cystic fibrosis and uh, upper gi endoscopy and biopsy remains a very important uh, test in all such cases even if celiac uh, serology is positive you need to go for upper gi endoscopy uh, so that you ne- know how much uh, damage is already already there and upper gi endoscopy sometimes can reveal other diagnosis like uh, even giardias giardia may not be present in stool but in upper gi endoscopy by brush border analysis you can demonstrate giardia and other causes like sometimes intestinal lymphangiectasia and other causes of malabsorption may be apparent in biopsy from the upper gi tract so that is a very uh, dr dheeraj uh, intestinal biopsy is another answer given by a participant uh, do you agree? you said upper gi biopsy so, yes, so it would be upper uh, intestinal biopsy from the upper uh, gastrointestinal tract it means there would be biopsy of the duodenum so that is a part of intestine so i would agree with that uh, fecal calprotectin i would not agree because this is not uh, inflammatory it's not a colitis uh, fecal calprotectin is a sign of uh, lower col- col- colon inflammation so here we are clearly dealing with a child who is having problem not in the lower gi tract there is no mucoid stool no bloody stools no uh, abdominal pain rather there is abdominal distension and flatulence which is because of uh, production of lot of gas because of the fermentation of Uh, sugars by the intestinal bacteria so investigation for the colitis should not uh, be uh, primary investigation in this kind of presentation so the site of malabsorption here as you say would be uh, above the duodenum or duodenum yes, or above sir. yes sir malabsorption is always in the proximal intestine it would be uh, duodenum or ileum so beyond ileum you do not see symptoms of malabsorption it we would see symptoms mainly of uh, colitis lower down Okay